Well, hello, everyone. If you're here, it means that you're trying to, no, too much, too much, just too much. Today, we're doing lap splices and we're continuing our retaining wall design example. Let's get in there. We're back at our problem. Now we're going over the blue section. L sub D equals L sub ST. And you're like, well, how do you know that those equal one another? Well, let's quickly take a look at the ACI. We're gonna find ourselves in section 25.5 because we're doing a lap splice now. You're gonna specifically head to 25.52, lap splice lengths of deformed bars and deformed wires in tension. And that's gonna lead you to this table right here. Before we go through the table, if you look all the way at the end, it comes down to two options of variations of L sub D. So that's your in, that's your development length of a straight bar. So first we need to find that, so then we can find your lap splice length. So let's head back up into the code to see what we need for a straight bar for a development length. That lands us 25.4.22, and we find ourselves in this table. If we remember from the previous videos, we are working with number eight bar that we're trying to develop. Um, so we are number seven bars and larger, pretty easy. And then you have two criteria here. Um, clear spacing of bars or wires being developed or lap spliced, not less than the diameter of bar. Um, so that's clear spacing between those bars, those number eights. Clear cover at least of diameter of bar and the stirrups or ties throughout L sub D not less than the code minimum. Well, we don't have stirrups or ties through our development. We, we, desert, we decided that we don't have those last time, so this first part really doesn't apply to us or, or we can't say that we're meeting those criteria. Or you have part two, clear spacing of bars or wires. We have bars, so we'll cross out wires, being developed um, or lap spliced at least two diameter of bar and clear cover at least diameter of bar. So clear spacing, let's go take a look at that to see if we meet this criteria. And if you were pressed for time or something and you wanted to be a little bit conservative maybe, you could just say other cases and these, uh, this equation down here and this one here, they result in a longer development length. Um, so really if you're trying to prove that you fall into this criteria, you're only proving that you can reduce your development length um, to achieve a fully developed bar. While you shouldn't just skip steps and say, oh, you know, and be overly conservative, you could, if you were on the fence, not sure, maybe a new engineer, say other cases. All right, let's jump back quick. The diameter of bar of a number eight is easy. It's equal to one inch. And I learned from actually a um, subscriber who left a comment that a way that you can easily distinguish the diameter of one of your bars is you take the number of bar and you simply divide it by eight. That gets you your diameter of your bar. Pretty cool. So a number four divided by eight equals a diameter of bar equal to 0 0.5 inches. Like I said, neat. I didn't know that and it makes sense. So that's really cool. And that means and we need at least a clear distance of two inches, because two times one inch. Well, if we look down in plan here, if we were to draw kind of our retaining wall in plan, looking down, and we have, you know, these number eight bars, horizontal bar on the inside, because the vertical bar is doing more of the work, so you'd wanna space that out. But we need to confirm that this space right here is at least, uh, is greater than or equal to two inches in order to get that development length case. Well, we know that we're spaced at six inches on center and then it's clear spacing. So then we need to subtract a half a bar from this side and a half a bar from this side. So that gets us equal to five inches. And you're like, oh, well, five inches is clearly bigger than two inches, but you need to be careful here because we need to lap on additional bar in order to make this work. That's what we're checking. And if we were lapping bar, it means that we would have an additional bar next to these bars. And in the worst case, they'd be both on the inside, like I have drawn here in green, of two additional number eights. So that reduces down from five inches, this space here that I'm drawing in blue, five inches minus another inch from this bar and another inch from this bar. So down to three inches. Well, we know three inches is still greater than two inches. So we meet our criteria. So we're good there. And then the other criteria I believe was we needed a clear cover of at least diameter of bar, which we know in this case is one inch. We know that we're gonna have at least one inch of clear cover. Um, so I'm 
confident to move on and say we meet that criteria since this is a retaining wall structure. I think I would do two inches if I remember the clear cover uh, requirements for retained earth. So we meet this criteria. We have a number eight bar. That means we're using this equation. We still need to find, uh, thanks to another subscriber, Ryan, uh, it's pronounced psi. So psi sub t and psi sub e need to be found. We know we have normal weight concrete from our previous unrolling of this problem. So uh, lambda is just 1.0. And then F prime C, I believe we defined as uh, four KSI, but we'll confirm that when we go back. Diameter bar, we already know as well. So, and F, uh, FY is 60 KSI, standard for uh, reinforcement. So psi T, psi E. You're just gonna move down two pages in the ACI and then you'll find your table. Let's head over. Boom, table 25424, easy peasy. And there's your Lambda, lightweight, 1.0. Uh, psi E, it's epoxy. We have uncoated bars, so it's just 1.0. And then Psi T is casting position. And uh, for this case, we are going to be other with 1.0. And you should note down here that they do have a little footnote that uh, the product of those two variables need not exceed 1.7. Worse when they're larger because they're on the numerator. Yes, they are, because that would make your number bigger. So there you go, this is a cap. They're saying, hey, you never need to go greater than that, otherwise we're just penalizing you too badly. But if you're not following along, don't, don't really sweat it too much. We have everything, let's plug it all in, and let's get L sub D. Just remember that your F prime C is under a square root, which means that you can't just use four for KSI, you need to keep it in terms of PSI, which means you also need to keep your yield stress in terms of uh, PSI as well, 60,000. Times the diameter of bar of one inch for a number eight, and that spits out 47.4 inches, which I'm gonna round up to 48 inches so that the contractor doesn't wanna kill me. And uh, you know, he's lining it out with measuring tape. That's easy in field. Make sure you round to numbers that work if you're at least working in the US to something that's easily identifiable on a common measuring tape. You don't have to always, right? If there's a certain situation where your design calls for a very specific distance or length or parameter, obviously use that. But try to stay building friendly when you're doing your designs. It really does help a lot. But now that we have L sub D, now we need to go about and find L sub ST. And that is per ACI 25.5.2. So let's head over there and check that back out. As I said in the beginning, chapter 25.5, splices. Table 25.5.2.1 is where we find ourselves because all of the sections in the ACI are so dang long. Uh, first, we need to start AS provided over AS required. Previously, we knew that AS rec was equal to 1.32 inches squared per foot. AS provided is equal to 1.58 inches squared per foot. 1.58 over 1.32 equals 1.2, which is less than 2.0. So we fall into this category right here. We are just straight up all cases. Splice type is class B, that's the only one we can have. If you're curious about class A and class B, check out the commentary, um, you know, over here, read through that, it gives you additional criteria. And that leads us to the two parameters for L sub ST. You need to do the greater of 1.3 times L sub D, which we solved for, and 12 inches. That gets us 63 inches, which is clearly greater than 12 inches. So uh, 63 inches controls and that is gonna be what we need to uh, fully develop and lap our rebar. LD, as you see in blue here, equals LST, and that full dimension here that you see is equal to 63 inches. Thank you everybody for watching and subscribing and learning alongside with me, especially all of you who have taken that extra step and have joined Peruka Gang. It really does mean a lot and helps me grow the channel, so. To all of you, you're the best. Let's keep learning. This is Rich with Team Kesteva. Peace.